Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! People have asked me how to use the diminished scale when they are soloing. Now, the diminished scale sounds strange. I mean, it's not like a pentatonic that everybody knows. The pentatonic sounds exactly as you expect, because you have heard it so many times. The diminished scale, instead, sounds strange at the beginning. But if you know how to use it, it has a great sound and it works beautifully. And tell you what, guys, it's not even that hard. A student asked me how to use it, and in a few minutes we can go through how to make this scale work for you. If you want to know more about those strange scales and other things, about scales and soloing, and how to make those scales fit in your chord progression and use them, I recommend you guys have a look at my course Master of the Modes, which is going to appear on the top left of this, top right of this video. And let's go and see how to use the diminished scale. My question is, I really like the um, sound of harmonic minor, Phrygian dominant, mm -hmm. Byzantine scale, and I will want to add uh, more diminished mm -hmm. in my playing. Uh, on the internet, I found a lot of scale called diminished, mm -hmm. some eight tone, six tone, exatonic mm -hmm. diminished scale. So I don't know where to start to get this new classical tone, mm -hmm. which one is the right one. So okay. I would like to have a little bit of uh, uh, information on that and maybe mm -hmm. some practical tricks. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Diminish scale. I know only of two diminished scales. You say there are, you, you found many. So let's see what you, what you found so far, okay? okay? Do you remember any of the scales? Uh, I I have C one called half diminish, mm -hmm. one all half, yes. and one half O. Yes, those and are the two exactly. Exatonic diminish. The okay. half all is the most useful of them. Okay. okay. I mean in principle you see those diminish scale, one of them is a half step, then a full step, then a half step, then a full step, and it's the half hole. And there is a whole step, then a half step, then a whole step, which is the same thing starting from the other note, essentially. And in principle they look the same. Turns out that the half hole is more useful, okay, or at least easier to think with, okay. If I play a C half hole, I have C, B flat, E flat, E, F sharp, G, A B flat, and then I start again, okay. So since I have C, I have both E flat and E, and I do have a G. The half whole scale fits both major and minor chords, triads. Okay? Okay. Makes sense? Yes. Then I have, a, I have a B flat. I don't have a B, but I have a B flat in this scale, which means that this will fit dominant chord, dominant seventh chord, and minor seventh chords. It will not fit the major seventh chord, okay, but no diminished scale fit the major seventh, seventh chord anyway, okay. so we don't care. Okay? Makes sense? Yes. So, over any major or minor triad, dominant seventh chord or minor seventh chord, you play the diminished seventh scale, you can play the diminished seventh scale, the diminished scale, half whole diminished scale, sorry, with the same root. Okay? Okay. Makes sense? So, I'm playing an A minor seven. You play the A half whole diminished scale. Sounds good, no? So I think the first thing is to get those positions under your fingers. Okay? Right. By the way, I hate, the, I hate these kind of positions here. Because then I always forget how much I have to shift for the other position and this kind of thing. I prefer to play it in the symmetric form, which is four, four notes per string. Because it's, it's the same thing. I just need to jump an extra fret between three and two, but it's the same. That's one idea. Another idea of playing this, which I use in a few solos, is to still think of this four note per string idea, but to jump the third note. So you play A, B flat, C sharp. And then here you play D sharp, E, G. So you have this kind of... Okay. 
It works really, especially well on dominant seventh chord, okay? Now, in this form, it will work in so many different situations, okay? So you can make it sound metal, okay? But this will work great in blues. As it is, with a blues chord progression, you play this with a little bit of swing, okay? And it will sound blues, okay? It will work in rock and so on and so forth, okay? So that's how I would use this in the context of improvising over a chord progression. I just decide on what chord I want to put the diminished scale, and then play the half whole diminished scale with the same root of the chord. Okay. And it will work. Okay, depending on the context, it may sound strange, but it will fit the chord. Okay, if we do this in a pop song, heads are gonna turn. <laughs> okay, like, whoa, okay. But it will work. Make sense? Yes. The other approach, which is the approach using classical music or technically in late romantic music, okay, is that you take the scale, you forget anything about the previous chord, major and minor, et cetera, et cetera, and just, just try to find groups of notes from the scale. Any groups of notes you find from the scale, you can always move it up or down three frets on your guitar, and it will still be a chord in the scale, because the whole scale is symmetric this way. Okay? So at this point, you don't have triads anymore. You have something else. Make sense? Yes. And you make it work with that. I mean, you can also have triads, but you try to make it work along this scale. And in this case, you are composing with chords and harmony more than with the melody. It's a different kind of context, but still creates some interesting music. Make sense? Yes. So th those will be your starting point. Think you can work with that? Yes. Fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you.